Now, uh, remember this. You're not 92, you're not 91, you're 91 and a half. Well, that's it, that, yeah. yeah. What's the secret of such a good age? Well, you see, I led a very ordinary life, first and foremost. I had a simple meal every day of my life, almost, except when I went out to the fairs and things, and you got a bit of beef, as they say, you know. <laughs> but anyway, I always stuck to one thing, and that was potatoes and butter <laughs> and milk. That was my dinner nearly every day of my life. Potatoes and butter and milk. That's non Nigerian Don Purcell speaking to us in Ennis last week on the secret to his health and vitality as he approaches his 92nd birthday. So what is the answer to a long and healthy life and what role do so-called functional foods, which claim to have added value like lowering cholesterol or preventing heart disease, what part do they play in the perfect diet? Well, to discuss this in more detail, I'm joined uh, by our microbiologist and nutritional scientist, Anna Burns. Anna, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Pat. Nothing wrong with Dunn Purcell's diet. Nothing wrong with it. The irony is I had this very same conversation with my 90, soon to be 91 year old father on Sunday. Um, potatoes, meat, etc. I'll go into meat specifically in a minute, Pat. The problem is when you're in your 90s, though, you're very likely to be suffering from AMD, accelerated macular degeneration, which you may have heard of, Pat. Um, It leads to severe blindness and therefore falls, quality of life decreases, etc. And my father would be one of those such people. Do we have the power to prevent this is the question. We want to live longer. The Japanese queried this, first of all, in the 1980s with an ageing population. Up till that point, food was seen as a value for nutrient, you know, value only as, as such. Nowadays, we're looking to get more from our food. Can we prevent degenerative diseases? And that's what I'm here to discuss today. Yeah. Now, these functional foods, so called, I mean, some foods are functional Anyway, they don't have to have anything added to them. We're talking about, say, garlic is supposed to be a blood thinner. Correct. And so, so that's just doing what he does. You don't have to um, do anything with it. Now, if you add it to foods, obviously it, it brings that effect to those foods. It does. But then you can get supplemental forms, which might be called nutraceuticals. Nutraceuticals are What's where the you difference? take. You take the active portion of a food. In the case of garlic, um, that's called allicin. And when you slice through a garlic, that smell, that pungency is the active ingredient, allicin. So you can take a concentrated form of that and pop a garlic pill daily. You'll get one in the in the health shops, which is coated 64 times, etc. So it won't repeat as eating many cloves of garlic might on you. But this has been shown to affect your cholesterol, to lower it actively, to lower your blood pressure actively if it's raised. So there's more to it than just eating your garlic. The population studies, those who do eat a ton of garlic, the Mediterraneans ideally eat volumes of the stuff. They've been shown not to suffer the heart disease that we do. Are we going to eat garlic in as much an amount as we're meant to? That's where you get the grey area. Could we do more than just have the odd clove of garlic in our week? Um, All sorts of foods have um, medicinal effects. I mean, it's argued that every food has a medicinal effect. In in other words, if you eat carbohydrates, uh, you can get your blood sugars up, which you need to do. Um, If you eat uh, meats, you get protein. If you drink a whey drink, you get certain effects. So, I mean, you can say every food is a medicine. Well, it was Hippocrates who said at first, Pat, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. That's the philosophy upon which I practice. No questions asked. But then you have to go back to an example such as the 90 plus year old male and living well and healthily. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is when you're starting to go blind, your quality of life is diminishing. So what can we do about this? We can eat lots of boiled cabbage, as that man in question would have eaten plenty, um, spinach, etc. And we might get a pigment called lutein. Lutein is an antioxidant. It exists in the retina of your eye. It's a pigment. There are others. There's zeaxanthine, mesozeaxanthine, etc. And these are pigments that are antioxidants. They fight off the free radicals that light causes damage, etc. Where are we going to get these? Well, are we going to eat enough cabbage to prevent this into our 90s? There's the question mark. Can we supplement? And there's an answer to that. Yes, of course you can. And you can prevent maybe the degeneration that would otherwise now, be expected. If, if you're getting something from spin- or cabbage, uh, does your ability as you get older uh, to absorb the good things in those uh, foods, does it go down? Does it diminish? Most certainly it does. Plus your taste buds diminish. Every decade they're less active. So you're 
interest in food diminishes and you see an elderly person orders a half portion in a restaurant they don't order the full portion because first of all they can't leave it on the plate behind them and second of all they're not of the same appetite their muscle um, strength has diminished over the years they don't have the same need to fuel the body of the 19 sort of 30s 40s version of themselves so our appetite goes down our interest in vegetables um, colour is what you're looking for on your plate on a regular daily basis to get these nutrients do we need to supplement you can argue that if you got it in your food and this would be the argument of functional foods that you get food with a little bit of added vim and vigour so this is the idea of your probiotics for instance everyone knows their Activia their Actimel um, I got my glow from Ready Breck when I was growing up now you get the poor frozen child on the beach gets it from Actimel the idea is that it might improve their immune function will it improve their immune function again the jury is out somewhat on this but the idea is that the bacteria, these so-called good bacteria that exist in our gut, they can go in and do jobs. The science behind it isn't fully delineated yet, but it does have an impact on our health. So it's been shown if you eat your probiotics, your lactobacillus, um, your bifidobacterium, they're in these live bio yogurts that you will colonise your lower intestine that little bit better and therefore have a better possibly immune function. There's links to, you know, recovering from but diarrhea. Are, are you better, talking only about people who are getting on a bit or are you talking about everybody? Because there's something in, in me that rebels against a normal, healthy uh, young adults say so they're out of the spurt of growth in the teenage years their hormones have settled down so they're in the prime of life male or female and you'd imagine that they should be able to get by on food I am totally with you on this this is the philosophy upon which I base every argument Pat I'm right there with you however back to the beef story I think it's a fabulous one we've been misled for the past 30 years and it's beginning to emerge now that fat is good for us hello I've known this for a long time a lot of scientists have but you can't go around bending about the fact that fat is good for us because our government guidelines tell us to avoid it like the plague No, 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 stop, stop, stop there Fat is good for us. Yes. We need 30% of our day's calorie intake from fat. If you were to believe the media products that are backed by billions of marketing dollars out there, then you've been led recently in the past 30 years to believe, Pat, that the only acceptable number when it comes to fat is 0%. And this is a fallacy. So so hang on a second. I know we did um, uh, a book called Salt, Sugar, Fat or uh, variations on those. Mm. And it said if you have a low fat food, it's probably a high sugar food. If you have a low salt food, well, it's probably a high fat food. You know, you got to get something to get the taste buds uh, tingling. But the whole notion was that by and large fat is bad for you. Even number one that become that became the norm because there are nine calories per gram of fat. There are only four calories in a gram of protein or carbohydrate so fat is calorific. It has a lot of bang for its buck in terms of calories but I'll go back to the beef story and that man that you interviewed in his 90s he was reared on bacon ham, beef, not every day but regularly. We spent the past 30 to 40 years cutting the fat meticulously off our beef God forbid we would get fat unless of course we're getting a burger. Now you look at a product called CLA. It's conjugated linoleic acid. It's now a nutraceutical. It's a product it's an ingredient that is taken from food and put into a pill and you can now knock it back and find it in any health store. What does it do? It helps you build muscle mass and get rid of body fat. Now there are two jobs a lot of us would require and certainly would like. Where do we get it? We get it in beef fat. <laughs> <laughs> the fat we were cutting off, Pat, for the past 30 years. You get it in dairy products. You get it in animal products. We need to have balance. This How is many other things missed. are we wrong about that? We're wrong about a lot. <laughs> I mean, for um, example, um, we're always too low salt, low salt, low salt. You meet someone who plays a game of football, um, you know, whether it's 80 or 90 minutes or 70 minutes of hard graft on the football field. I mean, they sweat, they perspire, they lose salt. I mean, yeah. those guys need to replace that salt. Of course they do. But if you spoke to a sports nutritionist, they would tell you that after 90 minutes of exertion, you begin to need to replace salts and sugars. What you need for the first 90 minutes, Pat, which is most people on the field, is water. Um, I spoke to your office manager a minute ago and she asked me about water. And the example I used, she was wondering, gosh, am I having too much of it? And the concern would be, am I flushing out all of my salts? It's a great question. Anthony Andrews, if you remember him from Brideshead Revisited mm -hmm. of old, he's an actor, obviously. Um, he took 
I think something like six and beyond litres of water every day while performing in Brighton a couple of summers back a very hot summer he was performing three shows a day um, he collapsed due to dehydration he overconsumed water um, so you know we can get these messages wrong what we need to get in mind is balance but there's more to it you have an evolution as well in terms of nutraceuticals functional foods they're interchangeable as a term your plant stanol esters your yeah. sterols and your benicol your flora proactive I am the ultimate sceptic when it comes to these products Pat but I can admit there's science behind this it has been shown to lower your cholesterol if it's raised by up to 10% when you take an appropriate dose now what happened initially was these products were sold in a margarine tub um, a product that I wouldn't personally choose to have in my house when you took the silver paper off you forgot to read how much it was you were meant to take in one dose yeah. so you trained yourself for the previous years to only put on a scrape of butter therefore you missed the appropriate dose now that drove a person like me daft because value is important to most people so in answer to those I suppose queries the products the one a day you knock it back um, one a day products came to the four and they now deliver up to 2.5 grams of plant stanol esters these are plant fats they're found in plant seeds so you're better off doing that you are really than trying to scrape on and off an onto your bread an extortionately expensive product yes no it's a matter of opinion um, but to be fair the European Food Safety Authority have passed this product and they have passed it in regards that it is the most effective way of getting plant stanol esters into our day these are plant sterols they compete directly with our cholesterol in our system so it is excreted a lot of excess cholesterol is excreted through um, the usual sources right. so, so even though you mightn't think you get enough by scraping on the bread if you're eating enough bread over your week um, you're doing yourself some good which again a lot of elderly people do